Hey, what is going on everybody? Matt here and thanks for tuning in to this video, which is going to be a very exciting one. We'll be talking about Andros Townsend and his FUT hair transplant transformation. I'm going to also talk about his pretty early hair loss. He started to experience as young as in his late teens. I'm going to also touch on to his SMP, scalp micropigmentation, that he got prior to his FUT hair transplant and more exciting stuff. So let's start. This video has been brought to you by GoFiber. Enter your pictures and win a one year supply of GoFiber. It's easy to enter. Order a free sample, take a clear before and after pictures and send them to selfie at gofiber.com. Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Matt and you're watching my hair loss and hair transplant related channel. So if you are new, make sure you subscribe to this channel as there are going to be more videos like this one coming. Also hair loss related, not just hair transplant related. And please don't forget to also download my free ebook five things I wished I had known before my hair transplant, which includes some mistakes I made throughout my hair transplant research. I don't want you to repeat. There are things that you can learn from, things that can really help you out through your hair transplant research and hair transplant decision if you are considering hair transplant in 2020. Now let's come back to the topic of today's video, which is going to be Andrus Townsend. Here you can see how his temples started to recede and also his corners are on their way to go. Okay, so he starts to form this typical male pattern, baldness pattern. This would be a really good time for him to start managing uh, his hair loss, look onto the hair loss market and kind of look out for alternatives. What can I do to stop my hair loss or prevent it? Of course, uh, assuming you want to keep your hair, uh, then you probably want to do that, okay? He could have also shaved his head or whatever, but assuming he wanted to keep his hair, uh, the best way would be to start managing his hair loss already when he was 20, 21. Probably he didn't do it as you will see now because his hair loss went worse and worse over the course of the next uh, three, four, five, years. As you can see here, the hair loss is going. He's like in his mid-20s around this time. 2015 is another game between England and Italy and you can see uh, that his corners are receding even further here. So he's most likely not on medication. In late 2016 or early 2017, I don't know when exactly, he decided to get a scalp micropigmentation. As far as uh, the design of the scalp micropigmentation, you can see that he decided to really uh, give a much more pronounced frame to his uh, face, to his temples. On some photos it looks too aggressive to me, while on some photos it looks very natural. But let me know in the comments below how you like it. In general, I'd say that the photos with more light in them make his SMP look more soft and natural, while the darker photos with less light in them, on the other hand, accentuate this edgy and almost like painted look. And also notice how the SMP looks instantly more natural on the right photo because of a lower skin to pigment contrast, while on the left photo he appears to be more pale in his face causing a much higher skin to pigment contrast. Well, I guess he got also a bit tanned on the right photo, so that's why. Let's continue and proceed to his hair transplant. I have no idea whether he decided to get SMP prior to his hair transplant on purpose, just to make his hair transplant look much more dense and fuller looking, eventually after he gets to the full hair transplant result. But anyways, as you can see here, he got FUT hair transplant, and I will tell you why he probably decided to go with FUT. FUT instead of FUE. You can see the strips car which is going across of the bag and sides of his donor area. I think he got a strip of 2500 at least to 3000 grafts, okay? Because we can see here that his temples, his corners and also the frontal hairline has been redesigned completely. The reason why he went with FUT by the way so if you use FUE and start uh, extracting graft after graft from the donor area of an, of an African-American uh, patient, the graft transaction rate will be higher. Uh, as opposed to a Caucasian with straight hair. So that's why many doctors recommend such patients, especially if they need many grafts, like in his case, 3000 grafts, they recommend to start or to go with FUT instead, because with FUT, you just take out the strip, 
and you safely extract a high, even higher numbers of grafts from the strip. If you take out the strip with the FUT, the assistants that are usually dissecting the grafts under the microscopes, they can see also the part which is underneath the epidermis and they can see how the hair is, hair is curling there and that's why they can safely dissect it uh, from the strip. Okay, so that was on the topic of the strip surgery, surgery and why I think he went with it compared to David Silva, who is a Caucasian with straight hair. He is a Spanish guy and he went with FUE because he had a good donor and it was possible to extract uh, 3000 grafts, which I think he also got just with FUE. Okay, so that's the difference between these two types of uh, patients. Andros got a skull micropigmentation about one year prior to his hair transplant. That means uh, that I cannot even see any redness. Also, the ugly duckling face will not look as bad in such case if you have skull micropigmentation underneath as a base. The hair transplant doctor decided not to respect the, the outline of the SMP entirely and rather do a more conservative design on the temples and and also the hairline hasn't been put entirely on to the line where the pigmentation starts but rather a little bit behind that's why you see some spots where the SMP kind of uh, comes ahead of the implanted hairline so that's my that's kind of why I think that he actually didn't get SMP to make his hair transplant look fuller but he actually wanted to get SMP just wanted to know how it looks how he would look with it and then he was like, ah, you know what, I probably want to have hair. So he decided to get a transplant. If there wouldn't be SMP, it wouldn't look as dense, in my opinion. It would be interesting to see how it, uh, this result turns out to be once the SMP kind of fades with time. For all you guys who are interested in getting SMP before a hair transplant, it's of course possible. And you can like improve the overall density of your result that way. Some guys uh, are asking me or always uh, asking me about like where you can get SMP and then hair transplant or you should wait with the SMP and first get a transplant and then SMP. It doesn't matter. You can get also SMP as Andros uh, did and then one year after you can get a hair transplant, okay? Uh, it's not an issue for the doctor to do a hair transplant on a patient with a scalp micropigmentation because he's gonna do marks where he created a recipient site and then he's gonna accordingly like implant the hair in all of these marked uh, slits or openings. So he's gonna like each opening will receive its graft even if the skin is kind of covered with pigment. So don't worry about that. What's good about SMP after your hair transplant is that once the hair starts growing around the fourth fifth month you can get a nice buzz cut already and even if the implanted area is not super dense maybe it has like 50% density by the fifth month uh, with the SMP underneath it will already look pretty good. So yeah all in all I think it was a really good decision that he went with FUT because again the, he minimized the transaction rate with it uh, considering he has African-American hair and again he can still get plenty of hairstyles that way because uh, the the FUT scar has been positioned very high, relatively high, and he can still fade or shave his sides and also the back, so that's fine. And he still has a lot of donor area reserves for his next hair transplant because he will most likely need it. Uh, maybe one or two transplants. I have no idea uh, what type of Norwood is in the cards for him. Uh, eventually, maybe Norwood 5, maybe Norwood 6, I don't know. But uh, uh, he should be on medication by now, um, assuming he also chose a good doctor who not only did a really good job by the way on his transplant but also kind of educated him on the hair loss medication side uh, of, of the whole um, hair loss management and stuff. So that's why I think he's already using maybe a Propecia, maybe it's also minoxidil, I have no idea, but I think he uses something to kind of slow down his future hair loss. That was it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in another video. Take care. Maybe you have already watched some of my YouTube videos and maybe you are considering a hair transplant for yourself. Well, in such case, let me share with you some of my best hair transplant clinic research superpowers I have not even shared on my channel, okay? But I have shared them with hundreds of my personal clients. Because here is a common mistake guys do during their hair transplant clinic research. They get tricked 
by flashy marketing, bad quality before and after photos, which can be easily photoshopped or edited, they put too much emphasis on online reviews and online testimonials, which oftentimes don't really represent the real quality of the hair transplant clinic on the technical level. And after talking to thousands of guys throughout their hair transplant research, I realized that guys often misinterpret these signs with the real quality criteria, subtle quality criteria, which lie way below the surface an average consumer is looking at. These are the quality criteria that decide how successful successful or unsuccessful your hair transplant is going to be. So if you want to avoid getting an unsuccessful hair transplant, find out about what are the real and subtle details you really need to pay attention to before you get a hair transplant. Do you want me to assist you during your hair transplant research and provide you with the best possible hair transplant clinic recommendations right away? Then make sure you apply for a one-on-one -on -one call with me by clicking the apply now button right here. And after you click it, and fill out a short application form on my website, I will get back to you within 24 hours and schedule a call with you whenever it's suitable for both of us and help you out. And I'm going to pack everything you need to know before your hair transplant into one single call because I don't want to waste your time. I just want to make sure that you get the best hair transplant result possible. Talk to you soon.